Okay, so it's December 18th, a week tall Trimble 2008. I'm here with Rody, protest the hero. Nice to see you again, my friend. Yeah, it's been half a year. What's been happening since the last three back in work tour? Nothing really. We were uh, we uh, went into the States for another month, and then we uh, went over to Europe for a month. After that, we got back like last week, and we're here playing a show in Toronto. Awesome. So uh, you went to Europe for a little bit back in November. You played a few dates in the UK. What was that like? It was okay. Um, the first date was in a place called Yeovil. Um, yeah, very small town. Yeah, not so hot. Like super cold. It was snowing and shit. And like the first time back in the UK in like two years. And we we're just like, fuck this, man. UK is stupid. And then, you know, we got a couple more days in. We got to like Manchester, we went to Glasgow, which was fucking beautiful. What was Glasgow like? It was beautiful. Not? I really enjoyed it. The show was fucking nuts, too. Um, but yeah, you know, it, we had a pretty good time overall, though the first impression of it this time was not so hot. And kicking into 2009, uh, you guys are going to be touring more kind of seriously. Yeah. Uh, like this year, you've been kind of like you've done the warp tour thing, and my impression is you guys weren't so much into that. No, we were not into the warp tour at all. You guys are more into the actual just being on the road as yourselves yeah, doing that sure. thing. Uh, we're definitely into playing club tours. Uh, like three to four bands, you know, not like a hundred bands or even seven bands. I think it's too much. But like that was the European tour. There was seven bands. It was like a mini festival. It was so fucked. What were the bands like? They were all like really death grindy bands. Everyone's going. Uh, but it was fun. Yeah, we got along with everyone. It was super well. So for the bands you're going to be touring in uh, with in '09. I'll let you answer your phone. <laughs> Sorry, that's my cousin. So the band you're going to be on the road with, you, uh, as I lay down. Yep. And the human abstract. Human abstract. What do you reckon to those two bands? Uh, they're both great friends of ours. Um, love both bands. I think they're great. Um, I'm excited to do it. You know? But as excited as I get, I don't really get too excited ever. Yeah. Um. So like, 2009 next year, right? So it's getting near the end of this decade, and I don't know about you, but this decade seems to have gone really fast. I'm just wondering what you, uh, as the front man of Protest the Hero, what do you think would sum up like in in the future when people look back on this decade it, in music? What are people going to think of it? Like, what stood out for you? What's the defining kind of genre? Or I think a lot of people will think it's a flashback to the fucking eighties. Like a lot of the fashion trends that came back. Fuck, man. Sorry, my girlfriend and my cousin just keep going back and forth. Um, yeah, the, like a lot of the a lot of the fashion trends came from the '80s, and they're really stupid. Like dudes with like super long, like permy hair, fucking you know, the guys in like purple shirts with those like Kanye sunglasses. Those are so '80s. Yeah. Um, and I think it's so stupid. And I think also a lot of people are going to look back at the indie rock shit that's going on. And I hope they realize it's stupid. <laughs> like, to me, what I've noticed, like, the start of the decade, it was all like uh, the strokes and yeah. stuff like that. Like, that was like the really big thing. And then Kings Leon. And then suddenly, like, they went away, kind of like nobody cares anymore. Mm -hmm. And then uh, pop punk kind of explosion again. And then also, of course, the whole emo thing and all that kind of stuff. Like, but to me, it's not really been like a defining thing. It's not like '90s grunge or anything like that. You like, it's just like a rehash of everything. Yeah, so true. for the next decade, do you see any kind of? Do you see any like what? What's your forecast? I don't know. I think there has to be some pretty huge catalyst. Like if you look at like the '70s, we had all those fucking hippies. You know, that was also because the like, Vietnam War. You know, so there has to be something pretty major and like impactful. I think most people when they look back at you know 2000 on, they're gonna think good. But fuck man, I'm gonna text my cousin and tell him. Wait, hello, yo, dude, I I'm in the middle of an interview. I I can't accept. I can't take phone calls right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, so you just finished up a tour with Foco.
Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Alright, bye. That's cool. Just keeps calling and calling and calling. <laughs> Sorry. But, uh... What was I fucking saying? Yeah, the defining moment, moments, or, you know, the one defining factor of, you know, this millennium is George Bush. I think and a lot of people are going to look back at this and be like, wow, this is one of the worst presidents, you know, ever to have existed. And, like, I hate to be, you know, kicking a dead horse. Yeah. But, you know, I think that's going to be one of the defining moments of this decade. So, you think the whole Obama thing might help somehow get people's writing some better songs, get get rid of all the crappy bands that are just basically... Maybe. It's definitely going to help interna international relations, you know, having a black president. You know, people might think that the states are becoming more open-minded. I certainly think they might be. Another thing I've noticed in this decade, uh, I don't know why I'm going off on this tangent, <laughs> uh, there's been a lot of bands making comebacks and basically playing into like their 50s and stuff like that. Like, the latest one I've seen is The Cure, who actually, they're doing, they're doing alright, but there's other ones which is less than debatable, maybe ACDC, but a lot of, like, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I hear you. What, you. When you're 50, do you think you're still going to be doing this? Absolutely not. I'm not going to be alive when I'm 50. <laughs> I hope that I'm not doing this even when I'm 30. Um, I hope I'm living some better kind of lifestyle. <laughs> Opposed to just getting wasted every night and waking up feeling sick every morning. You know? So what are the, the life expectancy of the uh, protest is kind of into your thirties then, and then just like call it a day? Yeah, maybe. Um, doesn't matter, you know. We got something built if we all die tonight. That's how I look at it, you know. I'm not overly significantly proud of what we've accomplished, but. Well, you're still, you're still on the up, right? It's like you're starting out. You've got somewhere to go. But if it ends tomorrow, you know, at least I'll have a funny story to tell. Yeah. So I've noticed you uh, made some progress with the beard. Yeah. Um, quite healthy progress since July. You're trying to catch up with one of your bandmates with the really long. Um, we're flying to Alaska in May for the International World and Beard and Mustache International World International Beard and Mustache Championship. Um, I'm not no competing, shit. obviously, but on the first day there's something called the Fuzzy Face Parade, and uh, I'm just growing my beard till May so I can you know, be proud and march in that parade. There's a Canadian thing as well, the the tash and the. I, I was well, I was told like in post hockey season, like people grow a beard until. Oh yeah yeah. There's, yeah, the, the playoff season, hockey players. I don't know, I'm, I'm not a hockey player. <laughs> I'm just a dirty fucking barbarian. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna bore you with one more topic. Uh, next week is Christmas. Are you into it? Like, Yeah, I celebrate Christmas. Um, just like a family get together, you know, we sit around, we give each other presents, and then we're like, Merry Christmas. Uh, is there anything you're wanting, particularly? For Christmas? Yeah, from Santa. My parents have been asking me that, and I have no answer. I, they've been asking me stuff like that since I was 10, and I've never had an answer. I don't want for anything. Um, I got everything I want. I got clothes on my back and a phone in my hand. And then a week beyond that, you've got New Year's, or Hogmanay, as we say back in Scotland. Yeah. Um, it's a big night as well, obviously. Uh, I'm going to ask you, as a rock musician, <laughs> for your advice on hangover cures. Drink again. <laughs> Hair of the dog. Hair of the dog that beat you, that's right. Awesome, man. Uh, well, good, night. good luck tonight, and I must say it's, gonna, it's good to see you on a decent stage with a decent crowd, unlike the tragedy of, of Warp Tour where you, they were stuck yeah. you on that crap, man. It was pissing down with rain and all that. That was like, pretty, I actually had a really good time doing that. <laughs> I felt like a god, you know? Like I was controlling the weather. But obviously, I was not. Do you have any resolutions for next year, 2009? Um, I'm asked taking a few words of advice from my bandmate Ara, who four years ago decided his resolution was to never make another resolution again. Good That's resolution. my resolution this year. Good resolution. Awesome, man. I'm going to let you catch up with your cousin or whoever it is that's been buzzing you. Thank you very much. Sorry about that, man. Yeah. Good luck with the show. You got a lot of Judas Priest in there. <laughs>